in this lecture we are going to look at magnetism magnetism is exploited in a number of applications these include electric generators electric motors transformers circuit breakers relays loudspeakers among many others it is therefore important for us to be able to analyze systems that make use of magnetism this is the purpose of this lecture let's begin by stating a few things that we know about magnets number one a magnet can either be a permanent magnet or an electromagnet and secondly a magnet has two poles and we call them the north pole and the south pole number three like poles repel while least unlike poles attract a magnetic field is the region around a magnet in which a magnetic force can be experienced magnetic force is experienced by current carrying conductors or by magnetic materials placed in the field the magnetic field is represented by imaginary lines called magnetic flux lines each magnetic flux line is in the form of a complete loop the direction of the flux line in the magnetic field is from the north pole to the south pole the direction of the magnetic flux line in the magnet is from the south pole to the north pole let's look at properties of magnetic flux lines number one magnetic flux lines distribute themselves uniformly in a homogeneous material number two each line strives to occupy as small an area as is possible in other words it strives to shorten itself number three magnetic flux lines do not cross each other properties of magnetic flux lines can be used to explain attraction and repulsion between magnetic poles in the diagram with the south pole of one magnet placed next to the north pole of another magnet magnetic flux lines are going to be established between these two poles because magnetic flux lines will always try to shorten themselves this will result in attraction between the poles and therefore between the two magnets if we place similar poles of different magnets next to each other the flux lines are going to be in opposite directions number one the flux lines cannot join each other because they are in opposite directions number two the flux lines cannot cross each other so as a result these lines are going to bend up and down now the flux lines will try to distribute themselves uniformly in space so as a result there's going to be a force of repulsion between the two like poles and therefore between the two magnets magnetic flux lines pass with greater ease through magnetic materials than through non-magnetic materials if we place a piece of a magnetic material like iron in a magnetic field we'll find that the flux lines are going to be distorted the distortion is due to the fact that the iron is diverting and concentrating the lines so that the bulk of them pass through it if you place a non-magnetic material like glass in a magnetic field we'll find that there won't be any distortion in the lines this is because the ease with which the flux lines pass through the glass is the same as the ease with which the flux lines pass through air or through space 
a ferromagnetic material placed between a north pole and a south pole will confine flux to itself. In the diagram, we have a coil wound around a ring of a ferromagnetic material. One end of the coil will become a north pole and the other end is a south pole. Now the ring of made from ferromagnetic material is circular and creates a path through which the flux can be established. Now because it is a magnetic material, it causes the flux to be confined to within itself. This principle is exploited in magnetic screening. There are some pieces of equipment that are adversely affected by magnetic flux lines. So therefore, there is need to place these pieces of equipment in an environment that is free of magnetic flux lines. To achieve this, we use a casing made from a magnetic material. So this casing is going to confine any flux to itself and consequently produce a flux-free environment inside the casing. This is known as magnetic screening. Magnetic effects of a current. An electric current establishes a magnetic field around itself. This means that as long as there is current flowing in some material, there is going to be an associated magnetic field. For a single conductor, the field is circular in nature and it surrounds the conductor. So the diagrams illustrate the shape of the field that is established around a single current carrying conductor. The direction of the field is given by the right hand grip rule. Using our right hand, we grip the conductor. Alternatively, and for safety consciousness, we pretend to be gripping the conductor using our right hand rule. We make the thumb to point in the direction of the current in the conductor. Then, the other fingers are going to point in the direction of the magnetic field established around the conductor. These other diagrams illustrate further the direction of magnetic field established around a current carrying conductor. So if the case when the conductor is vertical and current is moving up, the case when the conductor is vertical and current is moving down. The case when the conductor is moving into the plane of the screen. And the case when the current is moving out of the plane of the screen. For a current carrying coil, the nature of the magnetic field is similar to that of a bar magnet. The direction of the magnetic field is, again, given by the right hand grip rule. But this time around, we grip the coil or pretend to be gripping the coil using our right hand. We make the fingers to point in the direction of the current in the coils. Then the thumb is going to point in the direction of the North Pole. Alternatively, the thumb is going to point in the direction of the field inside the coil. So this is a diagram to illustrate further the nature and the distribution and the direction of the field around a current carrying coil. The magnetic field established by a current carrying coil can be improved by placing a ferromagnetic material inside the coil. Because a ferromagnetic material 
allows magnetic flux to be easily established in it. It results in an increased number of flux lines being established by the current carrying coil. A ferromagnetic material placed inside a current carrying coil is called a core. Let's look at magnetic quantities. The first one that we are going to look at is magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is loosely defined as the total number of flux lines in the magnetic field. We say loosely defined because magnetic flux lines are imaginary lines. The symbol that we use for magnetic flux is phi and the SI unit is the Weber. The second quantity is magnetic flux density. Magnetic flux density is defined as the magnetic flux per unit cross-sectional area. So which means we measure an area that is perpendicular to the direction of the flux lines. The symbol is P and the formula that can be used to obtain B is B equals phi over A. The units are the Teslas and one Tesla is equivalent to one Weber per square meter. We have an example here. We are given flux through a core and the cross-sectional area of the core. We want to determine the flux density. So we apply the formula for flux density, phi over A, and substitute using the given values. We will get our flux density is 5 times 10 to the power minus 2 Teslas. A third quantity is magnetomotive force, MMF in short. MMF can be said to be the external force that is required to establish magnetic flux in a material. MMF is measured across the length of the material and in the direction of the flux. You can liken it to a voltage in an electric current. The symbol that is used to represent MMF is the F that is shown. So you can see the shape of the F is modified so that it is different from the usual F. Quantitatively, MMF is defined based on electromagnets. So the quantity of MMF is equal to Ni, where N is the number of turns in a coil and I is the current flowing through the coil. Correspondingly, the SI unit of MMF is ampere 10 based on the defining formula. A fourth quantity is magnetizing force or magnetic field strength. This is MMF per unit length of the magnetic path in a material. So in other words, magnetizing force or magnetic field strength is equal to MMF over length. The symbol that is used for magnetizing force is H. The SI unit is the ampere 10 per meter. In this example, we have a coil wound around a ferromagnetic ring. We are given the number of chains in the coil, the current flowing through the coil, and the mean length of the path through the ferromagnetic ring. We want to determine the magnetizing force. We apply the formula for magnetizing force. We know that H equals MMF over length. We do not have the MMF, but we can work it out from the current and the number of turns. So our H equals Ni over L, and the answer works out as 200 ampere turns per meter. Permeability is the measure of the ease with which magnetic flux can be established in a given material. You can relate it to conductivity. The symbol for permeability is mu and the SI unit is the Weber per amp meter. 
permeability relates flux density to magnetizing force and the relating formula is B equals mu H. Relative permeability is the ratio of the permeability of a material to that of free space. The permeability of free space is denoted as mu naught and is equal to 4 pi times 10 to the power minus 7 webers per m meter. Relative permeability is denoted as mu r, so therefore mu r equals mu over mu naught. Depending on the value of permeability compared to the permeability of free space, we can put materials into four groups. Number one, diamagnetic materials. These are materials whose permeability is slightly less than that of free space. Paramagnetic materials are materials whose permeability is slightly greater than that of free space. Ferromagnetic materials are materials whose permeability is hundreds of times more than that of free space. Non-magnetic materials are materials that virtually have the same permeability as that of free space. Reluctance is the opposition to the setting up of magnetic flux in a material. You can liken it to electrical resistance. The symbol is an R and you should note that the R has a different shape from the ordinary R. The SI unity is the ampere 10 per Weber. We can obtain the amount of reluctance from the dimensions and magnetic properties of a material. The formula that we use is reluctance equals L over mu A. L is the mean length of the path through which flux is to be established. A is the cross-sectional area of the material. Mu is the permeability of the material. Permeance is the inverse of reluctance. You can liken it to electrical conductance. Ohm's law for magnetic circuits. In magnetic circuits, the cause is MMF, the effect is flux, and the opposition is reluctance. Therefore, the Ohm's law for magnetic materials can be expressed as flux equals MMF over reluctance. In this example, we have a coil wound around a magnetic core in the form of a ring. We are given the number of turns in the coil, the current through the coil, the mean length of the core, the cross-sectional area of the core, and the relative permeability of the core. We want to determine the flux and flux density in the core. From the dimensions of the ring and the relative permeability, of the material that makes up the ring, we can determine the reluctance. So our reluctance equals L over mu R mu naught A, and we get the value as 19.89 times 10 to the power 6 ampere tens per Weber. For flux, we obtain it using the Ohm's law for magnetic circuits. So therefore, flux equals MMF over reluctance which is equal to Ni over reluctance, and we get the value 2.01 times 10 to the power minus 6 Webers. Flux density equals flux over area, and we get the value 0 0.503 Teslas. A magnetization curve is a curve that describes the variation of B with H. In the diagram, we have magnetization caves for sheet steel, cast steel, and cast iron. As we can notice, the variation of B with H 
is not linear. As a result, the value of permeability is not constant, but it depends on the operating point. When we are given a value of H, we can read off the value of B from the corresponding magnetization curve. Similarly, if we are given a value of B, we can read off the value of H from the magnetization curves. A lot of analysis problems would need either reading off the value of B or the value of H when given the other quantity.